Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll be creating a custom reducer component. Let's start with a sketch on the front plane. Right click on the front plane, insert sketch. Now let's create a line that represents the length of the reducer. We'll dimension it at 3.5 inches. OK. And let's rename the dimension. We'll call it length. This rename is not a requirement for SOLIDWORKS, so if you want to control this parameter, rename it at your convenience. All right, let's exit the sketch. And let's create a second sketch on the front plane. Right click, insert sketch. Activate the line tool. And let's place a couple lines here. Right click, end chain. Down here. Right click, select to close the tool. Activate the spline tool. Let's connect these two points with a spline. Right click, select to close the spline tool. Now shift select the spline and the line. Tangent relation. Let's do it again up here. Shift select the line and the spline. Tangent relation. Activate the center line tool. Let's drop it right about here. Now let's apply dimensions. This dimension will be two inches. This dimension is the inner diameter of the smaller end of the reducer. Let's give it a good name. We'll call it ID1 for inner diameter 1. The inner diameter of the larger end is going to be 3 inches. OK, let's rename it ID2, inner diameter 2. Now let's apply some relations. OK, shift select this point and this point, horizontal relation. Let's shift select these two points and add a horizontal relation. And let's shift select these two lines, add an equal relation. It's going to be half an inch. OK, exit the sketch. Let's insert another sketch on the top plane. Right click on the top plane, insert sketch. OK, activate the circle tool. Let's drop our circle right about here. Right click and select to exit the tool. Exit the sketch. We're on the Features tab. Let's activate the Swept Boss tool. First, we select the profile and my path. We'll use the third sketch as a guide curve. Click OK. Let's activate the Shell tool now. Wall thickness will be 0.2 inches. Faces to remove. Let's make our selection here and here. Show preview. Let's opt to Shell outward and click OK. If you want to control the wall thickness of the reducer, you can use the shell thickness parameter. And let me show you where that is. That's right here. I'm not going to use it for my example. Let's accept. Let's right click on the annotations folder now and hide the dimensions. Next, we need to insert two C points and route points. Let's insert one more sketch for that. Right click on the front plane, insert sketch. We'll take a normal two view. Let's bring in a construction line. Right click and select to exit the tool. Now let's right click and select split entities. And here's our split point right there. Cancel out of this tool now. Our sketch is still underdefined. Let's select both of these lines. Add an equal relation. Now we've got a point, our split point, which is equidistant from the ends of the reducer. Let's exit the sketch. Let's insert a C point now. Go to Routing, Routing Tools, Create Connection Point. We need to select a face and a point. Routing Type, Fabricated Pipe. Nominal Diameter, we can enter a value here or select a pipe. I'm going to select the 2-inch configuration. OK. Stub length. Let's leave it at 0 and click OK. Now let's insert a connection point on the other side. Routing Tools. Create Connection Point. Select this face and this point. Now let's select the 3-inch configuration. 
routing type, fabricated pipe as well, stub length, also zero, and OK. Lastly here, let's insert a route point. Back to the routing menu, routing tools, create route point. Let's select this point here, click OK. Let's change the color of our part now. Right click on the part, go to appearances, and let's say fuchsia. Now let's insert a design table. Go to insert, tables, design table. The source will be auto create, click OK. Let's select the dimensions to include in the table. We'll include the inner diameter 1 and 2, as well as the length, the diameter of C.1 and 2, and let's click OK. And here's our table. Let's just stretch it out a bit. We'll give it a new name, 2 by 3 by 3.5. Let's copy this row now. Right click and copy. Now right click and paste it into row 4. The second configuration, let's make the length 4.5 inches instead and change the length dimension. The rest of the parameters will leave as is. Click in the graphic area to finish the table. SolidWorks informs us that two configurations were added to the design table. Let's go to the Configurations tab. Make this configuration active so we can right click and delete the default configuration. Yes to confirm. Lastly here, let's save our part. Save, we'll call it part 105. Click Save. And finally, we'll bring it into the library. Let's just navigate to the correct folder, Reducers. Drag it straight from the design tree right into this folder. We'll give it a descriptive name. I'll call it My Reducer. And click OK to add it to the library. Now let's create a new assembly document. OK, cancel out of this property manager. Let's bring in our flange component. Drag and drop it right here. I'll use the 3 inch configuration. OK, now let's save the assembly. 105. Save. The pipe we created in our previous lesson is selected, 3 inch configuration. Let's click OK. Now let's go to the reducer folder. Here's our new reducer, my reducer. Let's drag it in. Tab to change directions. And let's select the 4.5 inch configuration, OK, and exit the sketch. Activate the Change Route Diameter tool now. Let's select this line. Let's change the length of the reducer from 4.5 inches to 3.5 inches. Click OK, and exit the sketch. In my last three lessons, I covered some basic concepts regarding how to create custom routing components. If you'd like to read more about the specifications of different components, I do recommend that you check the SolidWorks help files. And this concludes our lesson about creating a custom reducer component.